Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. This is Accounting Nightmare. Welcome Rose, welcome Wild Knight, welcome Tag. Good to see you all. Are you playing Spelunky 2? Nice. Had a good run ruined because a bat got in your hair and knocked you in lava. Aww. How is Spelunky 2? I've heard very mixed things about it. I saw Tai Tuesday streaming and he had uh, some very good points about the design. There you go. Alright, hopefully today we can finish case four. Hopefully. Alright, so what did we what did we do last time? Last time we proved that there was an accomplice. It was the nurse. Uh, she fal she falsified the autopsy report for the coroner and she helped just helped hide the body and like took took the victim's place in the uh, the auction so no one knew there was a murder. We don't know why she did that yet and she says she doesn't know who the person was who she was working with. So we don't know why she did all this. We didn't get to ask her that. And we know that the victim was killed from a hit to the head, not the stab wound. The stab wound was after the victim died. Alright, yeah, so we're we're in the PIC office. We're in Edgeworth's hearing. And uh, it, it seems like Judge Courtney might be on our side. We don't really know. She's giving us lots of opportunities. And also Blaze is still an arsehole. Yeah, Blaze sucks. <laughs> You've heard it's pretty much Spelunky but more. So if you love the last one you'll like the new Okay. Yeah, I haven't played Spelunky 1 yet. It's it's one of those games I really want to play, but uh, roguelikes are intimidating for me. Because I always want to just unlock all the things and stuff. They, they, uh, they last forever for me. Alright, we're up to end part 2. End part 1 lasted over 3 hours. That was our previous stream. <laughs> so, let's, let's go. End part 2. Yeah, right. April 6, 9.18 a.m. Grand Tower, PIC meeting room. Order in the court. Prosecutor Von Karma, your report, please. I have bad news. We've searched every inch of the Grand Tower, but... The auction gavel was nowhere to be found. Oh yeah, we figured out the auction gavel from the black market auction was the actual murder weapon, but we can't find it. We're pretty good at Isaac these days. Oh, nice. Hades. Yeah, I keep hearing how good Hades is. I really need to play that. That is most unfortunate. It seems I am left with no choice but to pronounce a verdict. Well, it sure seems that way, you know. Normally, you wouldn't commit a blunder like leaving behind the murder weapon, you know. The best criminals would never do something like that, you see. I don't have enough information. Is this as far as I could go? Yes, yes. It's a shame, you know. But it can't be helped, you see. This takes me back, you know. All those defendants who came to me asking for a plea bargain. They trusted me, you know. Told me every one of their dirty little secrets, you see. And when it came time for the trial, I'd get them sentenced to life in prison. But they... 
We're all completely dumbstruck, you know? Each and every one of them. <laughs> hey, Magic. Welcome to the stream. Oh, how I wish you all could have seen it, you know? Th the stupid look on their faces. I shall hereby announce my verdict. Please humbly accept the words of the law. There's nothing more I can do. With this, both Kay and I are... If only we had some evidence! I never thought that I would be passing judgement on you like this. Is this the end? The defendant, Blaze the Best, I hereby indict you. What? What? Oh, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? I have here documents regarding a certain case. The IS-7 incident, a case that happened 18 years ago. <laughs> Documents, you say? Why would you suddenly... Wait, you don't mean... On the day of the crime, the record of your keycard being used was because... I came to this room to fetch these documents, of course. Although, when I entered the meeting room... It seems it was before the black market auction had begun. At first I told you that I came to gather documents about you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. At that time, I simply could not tell you the truth. Yeah. Sure. What are you doing, Justine? Why are you indicting Pops? Without any basis, th this is slander. That was a wonderful remark, Sebastian. Huh? R really? Of course there is a basis. During the case 18 years ago. Prosecutor Manfred von Karma fabricated information regarding the body. That was because the body of the sculptor, Isaac Dover, had been stolen. Papa fabricated information about a body? What do you mean? Oh, she didn't know. Detective Lacer, who handled the initial investigation, reported that the body had gone missing. However, in order to deceive Prosecutor Von Karma, there is a person who purposely did not report to him that the body had disappeared. Hmm. Hey, panicking? Welcome. Courtney looks weird on the left. Yeah, she does. Flip the sprite around. What? What did you say? That person would not forgive those who defied him, nor would he allow others to hold power. He would use any means necessary in order to bend others to his will. And then, also 18 years ago, Director Young was ordered by a certain individual to write a fake autopsy report. Dr. Young was the one who wrote the autopsy report for the IS-7 incident? She did say she's been writing autopsy reports since she was, uh, since before Edgeworth was born, I think she said. But please wait, Granny didn't do anything wrong. She was ordered by that person. She had no choice but to obey. That person? That person was the chief prosecutor at the time. The chief prosecutor? 18 years ago? Y you don't mean... Jeez, how old is that guy? The chief prosecutor? Who gave Papa his first penalty? It was none other than you. Blaze the best. 
Oh, what is he? Hang on. Sixty-eight. Oh my gosh. Oh, hey, Gold Frappian. Thank you for the bits. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well today. Really surprised they went with such a deliberately asymmetrical design when they intended to flip it. Oh yeah, I didn't take notice of the um of her, of her hair. That's a good point. Also, hey, counting. How are you? What, what are you saying? Pops would never do something like that. Don't defend him. Sebastian, we do not need your opinion right now. <laughs> Blaze the best. Do you have a rebuttal? Fabricating stuff about the body. One karma did all that on his own, you know. Falsifying the autopsy report. Young, you would actually do something like that. Man, you really did some terrible things behind my back, you know? Seeing as how all the parties concerned are here today, we should ask them directly. But please wait, Granny is- ouch! Granny? I'm sorry. I, I knew. That's why I- Yep, because if I didn't- he said he would expose you. If I didn't assist in the crime, Granny would be prosecuted. <laughs> That's what that man, the conductor, told me. Ah, there we go. That that explains why she was caught up in all of that. Edgy saying that person is all the thumbnail I need. <laughs> Oh, uh, is that uh, that Phasmo... Phas Phasmo... I forget what that game's name is. But yeah, I've heard of that one counting. It's apparently really good. I hope it goes well for you. So, Miss Jensen was being threatened. Was the conductor who threatened you blazed the best? Th that... I don't know. The person who threatened me was the auction conductor. They do have similar physiques, but I never saw the person's face. Any trivial thing is fine. Give us a characteristic that could be a clue. Th that's right. The conductor's mask. It exposed just a tiny part of his face. There was a tattoo there. I'm sure of it. Hmm. Updated. Okay. A tattoo, you say? Objection. I really have no idea what you're talking about, you know. As you can see, there are clearly no tattoos on my face, you see. So that person doesn't match me at all, you know. Hmm. I've got a theory about him. So I just want to go look at this IS-7 document we got. Probably going to be important. All right, date of the event, twenty fourth, the twelfth, two thousand eighteen years ago. Manfred von Karma, Gregory Edgeworth, Isaac Dover. Yep, Dover's body was discovered inside Mr. Master's mansion. Related persons: Delicia Scones, Catherine Hall, Dane Gustavia. There are no clues to whereabouts of Dover's son or Gustavia's son, who until the day before the incident regularly visited at Mr. Master's mansion. No, they keep bringing up their sons. I wonder if we're going to find out about them eventually. The person who threatened her. This so-called conductor. I wonder who it is, you know. <laughs> you have incurred the wrath of the goddess of law. I suggest you watch what you say. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking, Wild Knight. That's what I was thinking. Hasn't he incurred your own wrath, rather than the wrath of the goddess? Jill Crane had been pursuing you, just as I have. And I will not let her death be in vain. Crane was, you know, you say she was pursuing me. 
My, my. I didn't really know her that well, you know. I don't mind girls chasing after me, you know. But I don't recall her ever falling for me, you see. You didn't know the victim well. That is a testimony we haven't heard up until now. Before the eyes of the goddess of law, you shall give us an official testimony. I see, I see. Everyone is bullying me. Uh, if you're gonna go that far, that's fine, you see. I'll just have to make you disappear. Every last one of you. Um. <laughs> uh. There's a lot of us, and there's one of you. Also, Francisca has a whip. So. <laughs> Also, she has a hammer. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall cooperate with you as well. If we let this opportunity slip by, I doubt we will ever get him to stand in court again. Please, do not let this chance go to waste. He just threatened all of us. Why are we still going with our... Yes. I promise I will live up to your expectations. Now then, Blaze the Best, you shall testify regarding the victim. Regarding Jill Crane. If you can touch on Jill Crane for a moment, her Japanese name is Tsubasa Kagome, which is a very clever name. Yeah, Tsubasa means wings, doesn't it? It, along with the name of another character who is connected to her, is a reference to a children's, a Japanese children's rhyme, Kagome Kagome, which according to one theory is about a turtle and a crane being killed. And guess what bird's name is in the name Subasa? The last, sorry, the line in the rhyme in question, who is behind the falling of the turtle and the crane? And the last line is, who is behind you now? Okay. Hmm, that is kind of creepy. <laughs> hmm. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee, you see. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. By the way, it's not like I had a motive to murder her, you know. I have no idea why she was pursuing me, you see. You intend to deny your guilt until the bitter end, don't you? Of course he does. There's no way Pops could be the criminal. I mean, he's my Pops, you know. He's the very best, like no one ever was. <laughs> to catch them is his real test. <laughs> yes, yes, Sebastian. If you're going to stick up for me, be sure to have a clear basis, you know. Uh, all right, I got it. I'll clear you of these false accusations, Pops. I believe in you, Pops. We won't lose to someone like Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, yes. You really are pure, you know. That person. He really loves his father, doesn't he? However, one must be able to accept the mistakes of their father. No matter how much they may look up to him. Okay, that, that's interesting. I don't think we've heard her talk about her father like that. Each person must atone for their crimes, no matter who they are. This is going to be hard for Sebastian, but... I simply cannot overlook his father's crimes. Got the good music. To burn them is his cause, yes. Right, let's save. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee, you see. If she was a member of the PIC, 
Then you should have been familiar with her. Well, I knew her face, but that's about it, you know? It's not like we met each other on a regular basis, you see. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know? So you're saying you weren't very familiar with the victim? That's right. I didn't even know about the burn mark on Crane's hand, you see. You didn't know about the burn mark? Well, you see, even if I had gotten close to her, she would have disappeared soon. It's a pain to remember someone, you know, but when they're just going to disappear, you see? In other words, anyone who defies him disappears. I would like you to add your statement about the victim's burn to your testimony. Yeah, let's come back to that one, that seems very important. Either way, it's not like I had a motive to murder her, you know. Was there ever any trouble between you two over work? <laughs> Unlikely, you know. I'm kind of important, you see. I've gotten reports saying that she was exceedingly capable. But, you know, our social status was completely different, you see. So we didn't talk much, you know. That may be true, but it doesn't prove that you didn't kill her. That's rather prejudiced, you know. I mean, look at you. You're taking the side of a criminal. It seems Miss Crane was the one who had an interest in you, Mr. Chairman. You know, that really is a mystery. I haven't the faintest idea, you see. So that's that. Since I had no motive, your reasoning doesn't hold, you know? I have no idea why she was pursuing me, you see. So you have no clue why the victim had been pursuing you? Nope. Not in the slightest, you know. It's because Pops is such a handsome man. That could be the thumbnail. <laughs> it's true, you know. Women appear before me and then disappear, disappear and then reappear. <laughs> you guys could never reach my Pops level of awesomeness. It would certainly be impossible for a normal person having people appear and then physically disappear on a daily basis. Well then, maybe Courtney's going to disappear too. Hmm. Before that happens, I'll see to it your way of life disappears today. Oh, sick burn, Edgeworth. I see, I see. Then I should finish it before the day's over. <laughs> I will have to organise my information about the victim. If there's anything you don't understand, you should look over the evidence again. Perhaps you'll find a new fact this time around. Francisca, you're willing to help me. I told you, I'm doing this for Kay Faraday, not you. Francisca seems to be worrying about Kay in her, her own way. Oh. Wow. Well, uh, this guy is just constantly threatening to kill us all. Um, I haven't got this set up yet, so I have to load it manually. Scum. There you go. That's that's what Virgil thinks of this guy. Sebastian, the grown-ups are talking. <laughs> yes. Knock the lighter into his beard. Oh, I want to do that so bad. I only just learned that she had a burn mark on her hand, you see. So you're saying that you didn't know about the victim's burn? Is that really the truth? You really are persistent, you know. Do you really think I would pay attention to every little wound on a woman's hand? I would think the burn mark on the victim's hand would be hard to miss. Now that you mention it, Jill Crane would regularly wear gloves. I too did not know about the burn until the incident occurred. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. I thought so. She was probably trying to hide the burn mark, you see. 
I understand how sensitive a woman can be about these things, you know. I would like you to add your so-called sensitive understanding of a woman to your testimony. <laughs> There's a lot of good lines already. <laughs> so-called sensitive understanding of a woman to your testimony. <laughs> Maybe she was always wearing gloves in order to hide the burn mark, you know. So, you were aware that she always wore gloves? Well aware. Those gloves were practically her trademark, you see. But I guess they weren't just a fashion statement. She wanted to hide her burn mark, you know. I wonder if that girl over there is also hiding something under her bandages. Huh? I'm not hiding anything. I think you are, you know. You're hiding the face of a criminal. Those words should be directed at someone like you. I shall expose, here and now, the face of a true criminal. Ha ha ha, how amusing. Go ahead and try it, if you think you can. So, Jewel Crane regularly wore gloves. That's interesting. I should look over the evidence one more time. Alright. Well, that's going to be important. I haven't made the connection yet, but let's go have a look. We still haven't done anything with this. That's probably not related to this, but yeah. Always wearing gloves. She wasn't wearing them here for some reason. Why she wouldn't be wearing them here? Conductor wall gloves. I don't know if that's related. I should swap screens so I can look at it better. Yeah. fingerprints and blood. I'm not sure what her gloves have to do with much. We're trying to figure out how he knew about the burn mark, but it's right here in the autopsy report, isn't it? Yeah, it's right here in the autopsy report, so that excuses that. It's 
going to repress this statement to see what they said again. And where she always wore gloves. Over the evidence one more time. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing something obvious. It's always wearing gloves in order to hide the burn. Victim's fingerprints and blood were found on the hood. I mean, we know she wasn't wearing gloves on the day. I don't know what that would prove. counting? Hmm. Just do the old-fashioned way of evidencing him to death for now. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Look at Francisca's hint again. Perhaps I'll find a new fact this time around. My information about the victim is what Edgeworth said, so... Not too sure what information we're looking for, though.
might find a new fact is what Francisca hinted at. Maybe I need to re-examine something? Looking at the bear. Or the ball, whatever this thing is. Don't know what this would have to do with anything though. You can't hide that burn from me. Hmm. After seeing the president of Zengfar's body transformation, well-defined well muscles in this game are starting to creep you out. <laughs> That's fair. That is fair. prepared wigs so that Jill Crane could be impersonated. Well, I, if they're trying to impersonate Jill Crane, why wouldn't they expect her to be wearing gloves? I said, wouldn't they have prepared gloves? They had two wigs, but they didn't have gloves. I don't know how that implicates him. <laughs> Maybe that's what we're going for? I'll just save it. But that seems to be a contradiction. I don't know where that goes, but let's let's try it. Karen's testimony. Mm, nope. Hmm. I mean, it, it is weird. We got tag team by the two of them. I hadn't seen that dialogue actually. Mr. Edgeworth, it's fine. Why don't we just give up? Okay, it's still much too early to give up. I would definitely prove your innocence. Mr. Ridgeworth. Why wasn't she wearing gloves on the day? Yeah. What do I think? Absolutely nothing at all. Right, Sebastian? Yeah, Pops. That has nothing to do with your testimony just now. Even Sebastian? It looks like Mr. DeBest has gotten a bit livelier, hasn't he? Indeed. He probably feels a lot more confident with his father backing him up. However, I will break through that confidence of the De best father and son duo. Hmm. All right. Well. Uh, all right. I'll. I'm going to officially ask Chat for some hints. Because I can't think of what it might be. Feel free to give some hints if you think you know what the answer is. on the right statement, okay. Okay. 
Okay. A piece of evidence that if what the best is saying is true creates a contradiction. If Crane was the conductor. Wait, Crane wasn't the conductor, was, was she? I thought we were trying to prove that he was the conductor. Oh, is that what he's saying? He's trying to prove that she was the conductor. Okay, yeah, I totally forgot that that's what he's trying to claim. Okay. The conductor was wearing gloves in. Maybe it's the uh, the bear. Objection! Okay, I just totally forgot what he was trying to um say. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. If that is true, then it creates a huge contradiction. Oh, a huge contradiction, you say? I would like you to listen to the voices recorded on this stuffed animal one more time. Ah, oh, is that the contradiction that we're just saying? Why is she not wearing gloves? Okay. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. It was much more obvious than I thought it was. I was overthinking it. And the... I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. Silence, huh? I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Yeah, it was a... Uh... It was much more obvious than I thought. <laughs> We were under the impression that this was the moment when the victim was murdered. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. We thought that this statement was said by the culprit. Isn't that fine? What's the problem, you know? <laughs> there is a huge problem with that. If the victim had been wearing gloves from the start, it would have been impossible to see the burn on her hand. Gloves come off very easily, you know. She could have taken them off during the auction. D that's... That's not true. Miss Crane had been wearing her gloves when I took her place. Ah, okay. If you just had that in your testimony... <laughs> she must have been wearing them before she was murdered. W what are you saying? You! Don't you understand the position you're in? Uh, I... I'm not scared anymore. I have Granny here with me. Blaze, your day of reckoning has finally come. Somehow, it seems like you all want to disappear. Well, permanently. The only one who will be disappearing here is you, Blaze the Best. Edgeworth really needs to work on his one-liners. They're so bad. <laughs> Hey, how dare you say that to Pops? Does it really matter if the burn mark was visible or not? It certainly does matter. If the burn mark was visible, then we'd have a complete turnabout of the situation. W what are you saying? If the victim's burn mark wasn't visible, what exactly does that tell you? Yeah, I, th I think he has... I think the tattoo she was talking about is actually a burn mark. A tough one because it requires you to think and then take, then think a step back. Yeah. Oh, there weren't any burn marks. <laughs> there weren't any burn marks at all. They were all a fantasy from the very beginning. Prosecutor Edgeworth, what do you see on Miss Crane's hand? <laughs> There's clearly a burn mark. If 
we assume that the culprit could not see the victim's burn mark, then what did the person who spoke in the recording see? I should have the answer. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, give me a serious answer. The victim didn't have a burn mark, despite them clearly having one. The victim didn't have a burn mark at all. Mr. Edgeworth, you should probably take another look at the victim's hand. No matter how you look at it, the victim definitely has a burn mark. Ugh. He went straight to the point. Yeah, I've been wondering if that beard's fake this whole time. Not this whole time, but since they uh, mentioned the face tattoo. Sebastian, turn your way of thinking around. If the victim was wearing gloves, then her burn mark could not have been seen. In that case, whose burn mark was seen? Someone else's burn mark? Precisely. The culprit must have had a burn mark as well. In other words, I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. The person who said this was not the culprit, but the victim. What? What? Objection. Sebastian, could you please step aside? Edgeworth, all your reasoning up to now was just a figment of your imagination, you know. The culprit had a burn mark. Where was it, you know? If you can't answer that, then your logic doesn't hold up, you know. Where was the culprit's burn mark? On the face. On the face. Do any of the protagonists have decent one-liners? The best Nick ever managed was Mr. Sawit, or should I say Mr. Dunnit? <laughs> that one was pretty funny, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't a uh, it, it wasn't a very sick burn, was it? <laughs> I wonder where the burn mark could have been during the auction. Wasn't everyone wearing a disguise? Indeed. During the auction, everyone should have been dressed in a particular way. If the burn mark was still visible under those conditions, then... Now, now, why don't you show us? Where was the culprit's burn? You'll have to show me the proof, you see. It was on the bench. Could you take a look at this piece of evidence? Are you suggesting it will tell me where the burn mark was located? It's too bad, but I just don't understand it at all, you know. Oh, so I was wrong. I need to consider the state of the conductor when Miss Crane saw the burn mark. If I focus on that, the location of the burn mark should logically come to light. Hey, Edgeworth. Hurry up and present it, you know. Do we have that mask as proof? Oh, we don't. Okay. She was talking about how the, the mask showed... A tattoo. I was going to present that, but we don't have the mask. A facial tattoo. There we go. It was what the conductor was wearing during the auction. In other words, the outfit you were wearing at the time. <laughs> what can you figure out from the clothes alone? The conductor had been wearing a white suit, white gloves, and a mask. His attire had covered up most of his skin. However, according to Miss Jensen's testimony, the conductor's mask exposed a small part of his face. In addition, while she thought there had been a tattoo there, it's possible that she simply mistook the burn mark for a tattoo. A, a burn mark on his face? That's all very scintillating, but I'm afraid you're getting excited over nothing, you know. None of the PIC members have any burn marks on their faces, you see. Naturally, that includes me as well, you know. Huh? Pops? But... <gasps> the best burner, in your opinion, is in Dual Destinies. Ah, okay. Looking forward to it. Edgy also has the 
You are not a clown, you are the entire circus to Nick. Oh, I don't remember that one, that's good. <laughs> Sebastian, could you please be quiet? If you're an idiot, then act like one, you know? Normally, Sebastian is a nuisance to everyone around him. I have a phone call. You know, I'll, I'll call them back after the stream. Hello, sweetie. But this time, I owe him my gratitude. That reaction from Blaze's own son. It reveals the truth more clearly than anything else. Thanks to him, I am confident that my reasoning is correct. I know who that unidentified piece of evidence belongs to. That unidentified piece of evidence. Uh oh. I'm going to have to pick out something, aren't I? I wonder what's wrong with that prosecutor. Usually, Sebastian is slower to arrive at the truth than anyone else. However, this time he has probably figured it out. His own father is a criminal. Since he knows the truth, he's in pain, isn't he? If he didn't know the truth, he could have remained blissful in his ignorance. Okay, we are here in order to pursue the truth. It doesn't matter what path my reasoning takes. The important thing is to arrive at the truth. Once before, when I lost faith in my reasoning, you said that to me and showed me the way. This time, I shall show you the truth. You are innocent. I... I also... want to know the truth. Mr. Ridgeworth, please tell me. Yes, that's the spirit. <laughs> that's impossible, you know. For all of you. I mean, just where could I possibly have a burn mark? There's nowhere to be found, you see. There's no evidence to prove that I'm the culprit, you know. D that's right. There's no contradiction at all. There's no way there can be a contradiction. Not for my pops. Oh, he's in denial. Truth no longer sounds like a word. <laughs> yes. Sebastian, I understand why you don't want to admit it. However, if you avert your eyes from the truth, you will regret it forever. Pops, I... Just what should I do? Ha. I really wonder why you're such an idiot, you know? Sebastian, if you really want to save me, you'll have to try a little bit harder, you see? Gotta use your head, you know? Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. N no way! But I tried real hard. I tried my best, Pops. I went to the school you told me to go to. Reached the top of my class. Just like you told me to. Just look at this jacket. Only someone who graduates at the top of his class gets to wear it. I did everything you told me to do. That's how I got to be the best at the academy. Aw, this is sad. I even won all those awards. Just so I could be like you, Pops. You really are such an idiot, you know? You know those gold stars you got on your tests? I made the teachers give them to you. Aww. Every speech and debate contest. All of the judges were my friends. You know, Sebastian? If you weren't even able to notice something like that, you're really not worthy of being called my son. Don't you think? Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Jeez. Oh. 
What a absolute... Oh. Ah. Oh, even my son has disappeared. <laughs> oh my. It's enough to make me cry, you know. He, he was trying his best for me. And yet, he was totally useless, you know. You are truly a despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC, and as a father. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor. Poor Mr. Prosecutor. Blaze the best. You... Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. Oh, now. Maybe you should look in the mirror before you criticise me, you know. Yes, that does explain a lot, doesn't it? I mean, even you. You also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? Sorry, I was just talking to Steve. Ah, okay. Pretty interesting. I'll keep an eye out for that when we play Dual Destinies Counting. I cannot deny that. However, he is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best, even if the results aren't up to par. I've seen just how hard he tries, and yet, you refuse to even acknowledge it. <laughs> that kid is no good, you see. No matter what he does, or is told to do. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the Goddess of Law to you. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze the Best. As awful as it is, as it is there probably are real life people who nick their family members as much as Blaze does Sebastian. Yeah. It's really abusive. It's awful. Yes. That was my intention from the beginning. If there was a burn mark on the conductor's face, then Blaze the Best must be hiding it. What was he wearing during the auction? That is the key to revealing the truth. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Just gonna save. Gonna save. Please show the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. Fetch. Could you take a look at this piece of evidence? Are you saying that shows the proof of the burn mark? I don't understand, you know. I don't understand it at all. Blaze the best, even if you do not understand. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I also do not understand. So this isn't the proof. There is one clear difference between the conductor and Blaze. He should be hiding the burn mark there. Now all I need to do is present the evidence that shows it. Prosecutor Edgeworth, deliver her divine judgment against Blaze the Best. Yes, that was my intention from the beginning. I don't know how what, what evidence shows it. What evidence shows it?
Page two of that? Ah, oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh, I know, I know. I know what it was. The wavy wig. That was actually his beard. Yep. I got it. I feel smart! These games make you feel very silly and then very smart. If you would recall Miss Jensen's testimony, there is still one point that remains unexplained. Two types of wigs had been prepared, one of which was left unused. Do you mean the wavy wig? What are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. You were stuck on this for what felt like an hour. Aww. Hey, I would have been stuck on that previous one <laughs> without uh, without hints. This might be why that Courtney covered for Sebastian so much because of Blaze. Yeah, we are going to rip off his beard. Yes, yes. What does something like that have to do with the burn inside the costume trunk? Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze the Best. Don't stare at me like that! Don't you think there's just one spot where there is a huge contradiction? Specifically, around his face. So that's... Not a wig at all. Indeed. It was no wig. Blaze the best. It was your fake beard! <laughs> that's a hilarious, um... It's very spoilery, so I can't use it as a thumbnail, but yeah. <laughs> this is a real beard, you know? Don't tease me like that, Edgeworth. Your son must have realised the truth before anyone else. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You were also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. Blaze the best. How about you remove that fake beard of yours? Well, it burns it. The goggles do nothing. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Oh, a burn mark! Prosecutor Edgeworth. Justice has been served before the Goddess of Law. For that, I give you my thanks. I should be the one thanking you. Blaze to best. I hereby announce my verdict. You shall be taken into custody for the murder of Jill Crane. And who knows how many other people. There was a quick burn down, uh, breakdown animation. <laughs> burn down. <laughs> why, do, why, why was it shaped like a skull? Yeah, maybe it was a... Hmm. 9.44am, Green Tower, PIC meeting room. Mr. Ridgeworth, thank you very much. I'm so happy that you believed in me to the very end. 
There's no need to thank me. As a prosecutor. No, as a friend. I simply wanted to save you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. It seems that former Chairman De Best has been safely detained in the detention centre. However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. Blaze De Best is a shrewd man. There is a good chance that he has already disposed of it. There is also one piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze De Best mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. What do you mean? First, he found this letter in Jill Crane's clothes. Then, he also found this letter on Kay, who was unconscious in the storeroom. The contents of the letters seem to suggest that the two had been corresponding with each other. Which is why Blaze de Best assumed that the two were working together. Ridiculous. That can't be right. We're going to have to show you something. So I'm going to save. Yeah, he kept, kept saying, you see, or you, you know. Is that a Canadian kind of uh, trademark? After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay Faraday. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane's left breast pocket. Is that just an excuse? Yes. That is what I thought as well. It may have simply been a last-ditch effort to save himself. However, before the stern eyes of the Goddess of Law, these are all trivial matters. His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Judge Courtney, will you tell me what you know? Why did Blaze de Best murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden behind this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the truth, he was erased. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. I see. So that's what happened. While the Goddess of Law cannot condone her actions, we have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze de Best's crimes to light. Just going to ignore all the times Courtney almost got several innocents convicted per case. <laughs> Easily forgiven. We did the same with Francis Green Edgeworth, yes. Hey Lewis, welcome. Welcome to the stream. The Japanese name of Jill's boyfriend has frog in their name. Ah, the frog and crane. Aww. So, Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze de Best. And reveal the dark secrets of the PIC. Um, by the way, what happened to the young prosecutor? We have been unable to contact him for some time now. Do you have any idea where he might be? I had not been truly working for him, so I see. I feel very sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark until now. No matter how cruel reality is, he will have to accept it. If he can't, he won't be able to walk his own path in life. 
ever. A father's influence is not something that is easily erased. However, I'm sure he will be able to change from here on out. Yes, that's right. Surely, you must be right. Will I too be able to walk my own path in life? Oh, the cat alarm's about to go off. I want to finish this case before we uh, go to feed the cat, so I'm just going to postpone it. Thanks, Steve. Okay, is your body all right? Y yes, thanks to you. I'm so sorry. Even though you're my patient, you ended up getting suspected because of me. Ouch! You can't just take care of the patient's body. you got to take care of the heart, too. That's my granny. Okay, how are your memories? I feel like... I'm on the verge of remembering something. Well then, I shall take my leave here. Look up a video of kids playing Kagome Kagome sometime. Okay. I will. I'm gonna start next case tonight. Um, I'll probably have to... I'll probably end this stream soon, because I've got uh, some food now. Steve just got me some KFC. <laughs> So I'll probably finish up this case and then finish up for the night. I will be presiding over Patricia Rowland's trial. That would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley, who's in charge of the defence. Miss Crane was supposed to be her defence attorney, but now that she has passed away, we are currently arranging for a replacement defence attorney. Jill Crane had been in charge of Patricia Roller's defence. I'll also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly, since he's the prosecutor in charge. Well then? Ah, but please wait. What about Mr. Ridgeworth's prosecutor's badge? What will happen to his prosecutor's badge? With the chairman's arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. So I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps one could say, only the goddess of law knows. But, but that's... You don't need to worry about me. This is the path that I have chosen. It seems you have no plans to change it either. Of course not. I chose this path to seek the truth. With the departure of Blaze de Best, the law has once again returned to our hands. If you truly desire to continue the prosecutor's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. I did not relinquish my badge with half-hearted feelings. I see. It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter to each other. <laughs> Until our paths cross once again, I shall have you hold on to that badge. She's got my badge! Cheating Cleo, she'll find out, you know. <laughs> she will. A-N and KFC, name a more perfect couple, you'll wait. <laughs> that was my intention from the start. However, on occasion, the Goddess of Law is quite generous. Please return this notebook to its proper owner. Ah, oh, her promises book. Kay's promise notebook. It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the black market auction. The name Kay is written on the notebook. It seems Blaze the Best quickly realised this belonged to the girl since the letters he found also contained the same name. You speak as if he really did not know about the letters. Are you saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself? Yes, that man said so himself. K 
Kate Faraday's goal was to steal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. In order to achieve their goals, the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction. Or so he says. Unfortunately, this was all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely a coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and K really were acquaintances, it would be strange that she never mentioned it to me, considering her personality. <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but... It's something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? I'll make a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the Goddess of Law desires. That's... Um, I appreciate it. I shall pray that she recovers her lost memories. Aww. Yeah, I'm waiting for the surprise question. <laughs> Wondering if I should save again. Um, is something wrong? Yeah, let, let's save here. We might have to show her something. Okay, I am returning something very important to you. Ah, oh. uh, this is always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Aww. Look, Daddy, I wrote them all down. Yep, I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero just like you, Daddy. Oh, that's right. There was one more. I forgot to write down the most important promise. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never, ever forget them. Always try your hardest to learn things you don't understand. That's right. I'm... I am... The animation always bothers me. I am... The great thief who steals the truth. K Faraday. I'm the second Yatagarasu, and Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Hey, you remember? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, though. Thank you so much. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always trying to save me, right? Yeah. It seems you're back to normal. Wow, Kay, you've gotten better. Your health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose all your memories again. Ah, uh, Miss Jensen, Dr. Young, thanks for worrying about me. Hey, buddy cart, welcome. Motorcycle driving down the street, don't worry. Hey, if you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? I washed your clothes for you, okay? So they're nice and clean. These clothes. Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding on to them? He said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? Hmm. To be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. Now, now. More importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, okay? Hmm. Still, isn't it better if we do not remove her bandages? Uh, she should be fine now. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. Then, why was she so heavily bandaged? Better safe than sorry. A pound of prevention is worth an ounce of cure. That's my motto. What a troublesome motto. Come on, Kay. Let's get you dressed up over there. Now, this is definitely what a great thief should look like. A smile certainly suits you best. In the past, and now as well. Miss Von Karma, thank you for coming too. Uh, I... 
I only came because Scruffy asked me to. That's Scruffy. He also wanted to see your energetic self again. Gummy! What happened to Gummy? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe he was disgusted with the man who willingly threw away his prosecutor's badge. Detective Gumshoe. I must be going soon. I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. Ah, uh, what's going to happen to the two of them? One aided in the murder of an attorney. The other forged an aut autopsy report 18 years ago. Well, I mean, that's beyond the statute of limitations now. The, the forging of the report. And just like that, head trauma is fine. <laughs> Phoenix got over his faster. <laughs> loves bandaging almost as much as she loves injections, yeah. Those crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course. I will mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. We'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. Well then, take care. Now then, Kay. Sorry to ask so soon, right after you regained your memories, but I have some questions. Sure, ask me anything you want. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? On that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. I don't know who called me there, though. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake? When I woke up, it seems I somehow ended up on the roof of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in a daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. That's when I found the person in the red raincoat collapsed. I was startled, and when I stepped back in panic, I fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. And when I woke up, all my memories were gone. The person in the red raincoat. Who exactly was that person? That's like... Kay had a very bad night. <laughs> oh my god. That's scary. Oh yeah, I was certain that I saw them walking in midair. Right, let's save again, because we still haven't been popped a surprise question. Oh yeah, Lotta's still here, apparently. <laughs> Note 6 for Kay's book. Never go if someone invites you out to Gord Lake. <laughs> Gord Lake is nothing but trouble. Hmm. Somehow this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely, this is the main cause of your confused memories. Ah, here we go. You fell in a hole! <laughs> I think it's memories of two places. You fell in a hole. <laughs> Isn't it because you fell in a hole? It's true, that's what caused me to lose my memories, but... That's not really the direct cause behind my confused memories, right? Hmm, yes, indeed. That's not it. Right before you were at the Grand Tower, you were at the Gord Lake Park. In that case, there can only be one reason why your memories are confused. Huh? What is it then? Ah, <laughs> we get to keep trying. That's cool. Your name on the notebook. Your name written on the, the promise notebook must be the cause. Hmm. Why does my name being written in the Promise Notebook cause me to remember the person in the red raincoat floating in mid-air? Ah, uh, hmm. As one would expect, they aren't related. Right before you're at the Grand Tower, yep, yep. This is probably the main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both the Gord Lake Park and the Grand Tower rooftop. Which led you to confuse the two places. Huh? But aren't they totally different places? 
Even if I was in a daze, do you really think I'd get them confused? Oh boy. <laughs> Most likely there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. Yeah, I think it was the fact that there was a stand. But maybe it was the, uh, the My Little Pony Unicorn thing. Wasn't this at the Grand Tower? Huh? That's... I'm not really sure. Hmm. Seems this wasn't it. Ah, now that you mention it, the Grand Tower rooftop. It does kind of look similar to the Gord Lake Park. Indeed. That must be what caused your memories to become confused. So then, what specifically was the cause? <laughs> I like how it keeps giving me extra attempts. Just keep saying it was a hole. <laughs> but, but, thus, but thou must pick the right answer. Yeah, I think it was the stand. The Grand Tower Rooftop and Gord Lake have two points in common. They both have a cherry tree and a food stall. Ah, uh, oh, okay, I, I forgot about the cherry tree at Gord Lake. Ah, now that you mention it... Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar lo locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in midair. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake Park. You must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. So, so that's what happened. How dare they steal the memories of a great thief. They'll pay for this. Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat who appeared at Gord Lake. Oh. Beep, beep. Hmm, what's that noise? It sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out. Wh what's this? My shutterbug sense is tingling. I smell me another scoop. Y you're still here? <laughs> 9.53am. This has been a long morning. Grand Tower, 51st floor storeroom. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth, this walkie-talkie thing here is what's beeping. Hmm. This transceiver. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? It, it's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it. Here goes. Hello? Edgeworth speaking. <laughs> K. <laughs> K. 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 Please don't just answer it on your own. I am speaking with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I presume. D this voice is Shelley the Killer. Oh, of course. Oop. I congratulate you on resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been resolved? Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You! What do you know about the incident? That's not important right now, wouldn't you agree? Right now, we're discussing the mastermind behind this case. I've had an inkling that such a person existed, even before you said anything. After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used Kay to disrupt the investigation. Was there? <laughs> We're going to have another evidence presenting moment. I was wondering when the killer was going to show up again. Huh? There was. So, who's this mastermind? I would like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind? <laughs> It's a walkie-talkie. How do I show you that? <laughs> Would you kindly? Would you kindly? Badge! This indicates the existence of a mastermind in this case. Hmm. I can't say I really understand. I'm very sorry, but I also do not understand. So this wasn't it. Wasn't there anything that was left unexplained among the evidence? I await your answer, Mr. Edgeworth. 
Ah, they gave us another try, that's good. Alright, what was left unexplained? Well, we know that was planted by Blaze. The fact that she lost her memories is pretty unexplained in my opinion. could ask Kay now if she, if she wrote this letter. Who recorded this audio? Why did this record audio? Might be the stuffed animal? I've got a few theories that maybe the letters weren't ri written by, uh, maybe this letter wasn't written by Kay. I'll try this one first. It was the letter that Kay allegedly sent to the victim. C come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. Who could have prepared this letter? I too am quite curious to know. So, you're not the one who wrote the letter. What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? Is it not necessary for you to stand in court in order to make the truth clear? What can you possibly do now that your badge has been taken from you? I look forward to finding out from the shadows. This man, how does he know that? Do we have an understanding? Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Wait, what? Now then, if you'll excuse me. He said the case wasn't solved yet. What did he mean by that? And why would Mr. DeKiller even bother telling us that? Ugh, oh, nothing makes sense anymore. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who I am still has not changed. While I don't know where this may lead me, I shall reveal the truth. I swear it. Well, there you go. The final episode is called The Grand Turnabout. That's quite a quite a name. Hope it will be grand. Ha <laughs> It's a walkie-talkie from twen from 22X. It can transmit images. <laughs> well then, alright. We'll leave it there. I would have liked to continue, but you know, I've got some food. Food's getting cold. Also, I have to call someone back, so. So we'll continue this next time. Hey, sweetie. Oh uh, yes, um, I cancelled your cat alarm and it's now 23 minutes after I usually feed you because I am scum, scum, scum. <laughs> it's looping. <laughs> Hello sweetie. A stream where you don't need to watch the VOD the next day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to set off the cat alarm and you can all see her react. There's the cat alarm. <gasps> Is it food time, sweetie? She's like, yeah, finally. Jeez. Alright, gonna go feed the cat. Eat food, do all kinds of stuff. Uh, who is streaming at the moment? Yeah, since I didn't stream for very long today, I'll see how my voice feels. Maybe I can just stream again tomorrow. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Pi is still streaming. 
who's playing Mario Brothers 35, that new uh, Battle Royale thing. So I'm going to send you all over to him. Thank you all for watching. That case was awesome. I loved it. It was amazing. Slash raid, I ate your pie. And I shall see you all next time. See ya.